2013, had two heart attacks and two strokes the same year. That didn't happen to me personally, but it affected me and my family just as it, it would have happened to me because of somebody in my life that I care about. And he was in a situation for 18 months, had no income. Now somebody's got to step in and fill in the gap, gang. Who's that going to be? If you care about people in your life, is there people, if there's people connected to you somewhere along the line, things like this can happen. As a matter of fact, they say now, the Cancer Society statistics say that one in three people now will get some kind of cancer. Heart attacks, we're going to go through that stuff in just a second. Strokes that people have, this is a big deal. Life insurance today is no longer just a death benefit. It's now a living benefit, just like what you heard right here, and it's a product that can be used to replace and protect, if need be, income. That's what we're talking about here. Is it a big deal, if you could, to insure your income? We'll show you how to do that. We can show you how to do that. Roll, ready to go? Good. Disclaimer here. We don't give tax advice. Or legal advice. So again, we're just going to right up front again address that and deal with that. So that's not our purpose here. We're here again to give some information, some education, if you will, about some things that can make a huge difference in people's lives. Freedom Equity Group, again, that's our marketing company. That's who we are. And it really is, as you see in the next sentence there, it's all about freedom. Now, I don't know about y'all, to me, that's one of the biggest words in any language, not just the English language. Freedom's a big dead gum deal. I've been blessed, and several of us in this room have been blessed our entire life, our careers, to be able to have what's called freedom there in the sense that we've been self-employed, been in business for ourselves, not under the thumb of somebody else, be able to make the calls we want to make, live the life we want to live, do the things we want to do, and it's an unbelievable thing. I believe with all my heart you can't put a price tag on your own freedom, your time. Greatest resource we have in life, non-renewable resource, the time that we have. The question is, what are you doing with yours? Do you own it, or are you renting it out to somebody else? Are you exchanging and changing hours for dollars? Are you in a position in your life where you can do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it? We have a business model and an opportunity if you catch the vision of what we're doing that can allow you to do those things if that's important to you. So again, crusade, building financial freedom for every American family. Is that something that would be a worthwhile task, would you think? If we could do that, help do that? So I believe so. Mission, show every American how to save, grow, and retire in dignity. Key word right here, punchline in what we do, all tax-free with living benefits, financial freedom. I love to use this slide right here because I'm a, a new grandfather, nine-month-old little boy, just like that. And what touches my heart as much as anything that I deal with day in, day out is that question. It's asked right there below that little fellow. Will his life, the life of this little fellow, be better than his father or his grandfather's in the economy today in America and the America that we live in today? I think we need to ask that question, all of us, for our kids, for our grandkids, and are there some things that we can do to make a difference in their life. I believe with all my heart in the scriptural principle of a wise person leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I believe that. And I believe that FEG gives us the opportunity for those that want it, like myself, to be able to do those things. What's the solution? Talks about here again. Just some of the things that people are confronted with today in America. Unemployment, close to 10%. Or, uh, unemployment, rather. Unemployment, close to 10%. Underemployment at 20%. Major thing for people today, again, accepting jobs, and maybe if they're fortunate enough to work, very much underemployed with what their background and credentials are, what they're degreed to do. Overqualified for a lot of people in some of the things that they're doing. Stock market volatility, real estate market, market losses, retirement account losses, inflation fears, Income tax increases are looming consistently. Uh, widespread uncertainty, retirement income, running out of money. Here's the major ones here that we bring to, to light. Low returns with high fees on investments.
people having the wrong type of insurance and investments. So these things we address and we deal with with folks and give them some options that they didn't know about until talking to someone that's involved in what we're doing. Problem, seven out of 10 American, of the American population will suffer a critical or chronic illness such as a heart attack, stroke, or cancer before age 65. The majority will survive and many are financially crippled in the process of recovery. Personally, again, in my life, Two different men that I've been involved with for a number of years. One was 52, the other 56, within the last three weeks, died of a heart attack. It didn't, it didn't, didn't fulfill this circumstance here. Had a heart attack, boom, gone. 52, 56. Left small children at home, or young children, rather. Had children late in life, but both of them left kids behind. So it happens every day, young day. Three big dangers to us and to anyone else. This just kind of gives the numbers. And again, yeah, I, this, we're not making these numbers up. This is from the Cancer Society and from the Heart Association. You can read them for yourself. 1.2 million Americans suffer a heart attack every year. 17 million Americans live with having survived a heart attack. About 800,000 close to it have a stroke each year. And about 3.5 million new cases a year of cancer. Like I was talking about a while ago, statistics now, one in three. Okay? And it says here the average cost of 146000 Over 65% of the expenses are indirect or not covered by traditional insurance. 11 million people currently living with cancer. So it's a big darn deal. When we start talking about these things, these are things that people are unaware of and need to know. There's over a 70% chance you will suffer a critical illness by age 65. Medical issues, this is a big, big, big statistic right here, use a lot. Most folks have no clue about this. Over two-thirds of all bankruptcies are due to medical issues. Now, one of the things when we first started getting into this uh, critical illness thing and talking about living benefits was to find out that the average age of a person that has for the first time a heart attack, stroke, or cancer, 42 years old. Now, think about that that's hard for most of us to accept, but that's, again, their statistics. Another thing, particularly on this bankruptcy thing that's interesting, the average age of a person that files bankruptcy, guess what that age is? 43. Isn't that interesting? Okay? And he goes on to say, Harvard did a study and found out that approximately 80% of the people that filed bankruptcy due to medical issues had health insurance at the start of the bankrupting illness. Statistics show that critical illnesses are striking more Americans every year, and American is diagnosed with cancer every 9.3 seconds. I don't know if you knew that or not, if you were aware of these statistics, but again, this is what our purpose is, we believe, to be able to share these facts with folks and give them some options. Problem, most of the population today are retirement. We're kind of shifting gears here for just a second. We just talked about the follow-up to Jessica's story. What a big deal it is in regards to what kind of life insurance do you own? Old kind or new kind? What's the old kind? The kind that you've got to die to use. What's the new kind? The kind that will ensure your income in the event that some of this stuff would happen to you here. Now stop and think about it for a second. If you had one of these circumstances happen in your life, what kind of life insurance would you like to have? The old kind or the new kind? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. See, I would too, okay? Let me ask you another question. How many people do you know that have life insurance, if they had the old kind and they had the choice to get the new kind, probably would choose the new kind if they knew about it. Do you think there's any out there that could make that choice? See, I do too. As a matter of fact, we're finding out a lot of folks don't have any trouble making that decision. So these are some of the things, again, we're trying to get people aware of and let them know that they've got options and uh, just share the message with them. So again, we were talking about the benefits of living benefits, dealing with life insurance. Another thing again before we shift gears real quick to retirement dollars and such, on the average, they say, statistically, there's about 150 million life insurance policies in force in America. 150 million, roughly. Less than 2% of them have any form 
of living benefits attached to it. Let me see. Less than how many? Less than 2% of 150 million policies in force have any form, any type of living benefit, and less than 20% of those policies that are in force are represented by an insurance agent still in the business. The majority of people out there have nobody, unless it's someone like us, to share with them. Here's what you could be doing. Yes, sir, Blue. Well, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. But the, somebody asked me about the market, how big it was. I said, if we could do a million a year, which we're not that good. I don't think we'll ever be that good. A.O. Williams sells terrible product, but they had two million recruits. They didn't even scratch 1% of the market. And, and they outperform most of the major carriers. But if, if we could do a billion a year, think about it. We've only got 149 years left to recruit people. To. So you need to be recruiting <laughs> kids, their grandkids, their grandkids. You know, when we start talking about, again, the size of our market that's available to them, it's mind-boggling. And that's really, again, what we're doing and doing these presentations, these business uh, briefings and such, is looking for those that have an entrepreneurial spirit it says, you know, I'm looking for something that I can get involved with that gives me an opportunity, number one, to make a difference, like I was talking about a while ago, where you feel like you've really got a purpose in what you're doing, and there really is a need that we feel. And looking to get in a marketplace, and if we go out there and do the kind of things we're talking about here, what kind of reward is that for you in terms of building a business, building a company, and can it really do something that changes you and the legacy that you leave for your family and the people that you reach out and touch. We believe that it does. But you evaluate that for yourself. Now again, like I said, we're talking to talk here for a second about where people, how they retire, where they save the money, that kind of thing. I think everybody in here is familiar with what you see right here. IRAs, 401Ks, 403Bs. Qualified plans that are fully taxable. Now, I want to point this out because I think it's something that's always worthy just to say to get people thinking about. We hear about the term qualified accounts, qualified money, qualified funds, that kind of deal. I found out, I've been doing this kind of stuff now almost 40 years. Quite, quite a while, a long time. And I, I've, over the years, become accustomed to ask people, do you understand when they say qualified funds, that qualified accounts you have, what that really means? And most people have no clue. Now they're familiar again, IRA, 401k, that kind of deal. But when you say qualified funds, what does that mean? They got no idea, no clue, no, I really don't know what that means. And I'll let them know what it means is when you put your money in one of these accounts right here, you've turned it over basically to a partner. You say, partner? What do you mean a partner? You've turned it over to the government, basically, is what you've done. And the bottom line of the story is this when it comes time that you want your money, You've got to qualify to get it back. Absolutely. And this young lady is a CPA. Am I, am I out of bounds in what I'm no, saying? No, you are so right. See, now think about that. Now, and I'll go a step further now that you've inspired me here and really, again, got me excited with what you said, okay? Don't get me excited. Let me, let, listen to this one, okay? I use this a lot now. And, and see, people got no clue. They got no idea. As a matter of fact, Steve, remind me, again, where we were today, what you, you asked your cousin. Okay, again, about having a 401k. Okay, but you and I were together. What she said today, just keep that in mind. Don't make it too far away. But the bottom line is this. When you're talking to folks, and you're talking about one of these accounts right here, see, most people got no clue. They really don't, just like Steve's going to share with you here in just a second. But and I'll ask people, I said, do you realize on this account that you have right here, if it's a 401k or four, whatever it is, IRA, do you realize you do know you've got a partner, right? And they'll say, What? What do you mean a partner? Oh, sure. You've got a partner with you on that account. And it's the government. It's the IRS. It's your Uncle Sam. Okay? Now, let me explain to you real quick how that contract works because it probably wasn't explained to you this way. But you tell me whether or not it was, all right? Here's how it works. Here's really how this thing works and is designed to put together. You put up all the money the one that's contributed to the account, you put all the money up, you take all the risk, and your partner makes all the rules. How you can use it, when you can use it, what the tax rates are going to be somewhere along the line. How many contracts would you get into with anybody that down the road? Say, well, how much am I going to owe to you down the road? We'll let you know when we get there. How many people would do that? 
But see, that's the way it is in one of these accounts. And so here's the bottom line, the real kicker to the story. The partner that you've got on these accounts, he's broke. <laughs> he's $17 trillion in debt. Okay, that's your partner. He makes the rules. So when it comes time that you want your money, who do you think the rules are going to be made in favor of? You or him? Yeah. Is that is that a fair assessment? What I just is it, is it fair really? Yes. Is that out of bounds? No, that's social. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I found out over the years too, and asking people, it's amazing. And Steve, I want you to again share this if you would experience it just today. Over the years, I can't tell you how many folks that I've asked the question. When we sit out and start talking about their own personal circumstances. I find out they've got a retirement account, and it's a four hundred one k. And, you know, we'll get to talking about that. And I said, do you have any idea how much you actually have in your 401k? Oh, sure, I know how much I've got in there, really. So, yeah, I've got, I've got $500,000. I've got $700,000. I've got a million dollars in my 401k. I said, really? Really? Now, is that, is that before taxes or after taxes? And they kind of get that blank look on their face. Well, uh, I'm not sure. I... I, 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 I uh, then they start getting kind of pain. They never think about that. And see, the amazing thing is, whoever is managing that account, they want them to think that they've got a million dollars in that account. Absolutely. Because they're going to keep contributing, want to keep building that thing up. But the bottom line, they never have taken into consideration the fees that they're paying for whoever's managing that account, which averages in a 401k across the country about 3.9%. Now figure that in on whatever the value is of your account. And then the big kicker, obviously, when it comes time, it comes time you want your money, then you're going to pay the tax burden and debt as well. We use the term all the time that in a qualified account, what you're really doing is you're creating a tax time bomb for yourself. And our advice in that is stop it. Quit doing it. Why do you want to create a problem for yourself like that? And the bottom line is down the road, you don't know how much of a tax burden and time bomb that's going to create for you. Is there anybody in here that believes in the future taxes are going down? No. Nope. Anybody? Okay. See, I don't think so either. And I ask that question over and over and over, get the same answer every time I ask it. Everyone says, I believe it's going up. Let me tell you another question I ask. I get the same answer to every time I ask the question. and been asking it for a lot of years. In the account that you have, that retirement account that you've set up and you've invested 17 years in, 26 years in, 38 years in, how much of that account can you afford to lose? Nothing. That's the same answer, Santiago. I always get the same answer. I've never had anyone say, well, I can afford about half of it. Never. They always say that. So my question is, what are you doing in an account that you can lose money every day? If you could insure that retirement account, would it make sense to do that? I mean, you only have 27 years invested in that thing. And the time for most people is what you can't replace. Because see, when 27 years is gone, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but it's the truth that I ever told it. When time is gone, it ain't coming back. It's a non-renewable resource, gang. See, think about it this way. If you lost your money, if you lost your money today, is it possible with a little time you might be able to regain it? The market comes back. You make a few wise decisions. Of what, is it possible? Would it be possible if you lost your money, you might could make it back? Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. You possibly could. Okay? Could, could recover. If you lost your health, is it possible with medical breakthroughs and all that kind of stuff, would it be possible, like we're talking about here, heart attacks, broke cancer, all that stuff, is it possible you might could regain your health? Yes. Well, let me tell you something. You can't regain or reclaim 15 seconds ago. You can be Bill Gates if you want to be. You can have 
the money he's got, Warren Buffett, anybody else you can think of. Those guys right there together could put their resources together and can't buy back 15 seconds. When it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. It ain't coming back. Non-renewable resource, the time that we have, what are you doing with it? Whether you're invested in dollars or whether you're invested in your life, where are you invested it at? Are you getting a return? See, life, what I've, I've boiled down as far as I'm concerned, is the, what's the rate of return on your time? Are you getting rewarded the way you want to? Are you working for somebody else? Has somebody else determined for you what your life and your time is worth? So we believe in what we do. We can make a difference in people's lives in a number of ways, and you can be and do what it is you want out. Does that make sense to anybody here with me? Yes, okay? it does. Okay, that's what we're about. Steve, if you would, <laughs> just today, you asked you ask your cousin a question about her 401k. Very quick, what, what did she say? Well, when I asked her, did you have one? And she said, yes. I said, how much of that do you want? And she said, she looked at you like, what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. I'm standing there watching this. <laughs> and then she said, all of them. And I said, well, if you knew you didn't know I'm going to order them, would that freak you out? Yeah, I said, well, who are you in partnership with? And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, who else? Who are you in partnership with? She goes, what do you mean? Well, when you take your, when you ask for your money, who gets the first cut? And then it's all done. Mm -hmm. I said, your uncle. We got the same uncle. Uncle said. Right, that's right. <laughs> you should have seen her face. I mean, classic thing. And you know what? It, it, it all came about by one thing. He's bold enough to ask the question. And I mean, this is outside of what just had been a funeral. That's how bold he is. <laughs> we just walked out of a funeral. And he's talking to his family member. He's working the room. Okay? I mean, it was, it was really classic. But it just showed, again, people have no clue. When you ask them what they've got in their account, they're not having to take into consideration how that thing really works. And the amazing thing is they really don't know. No, and we start talking to folks about the difference we make. It blows them smooth away. And she made for sure that he knew how to be able to contact and get a hold of her. You could see the wheels turning. And she's going, wow, nobody's ever told me that kind of thing. No, no, it's never challenged me like that before. Gang, let me tell you something. What we do is that I'm proud of it and can't stand it. We are think out of the box kind of people. What you're seeing here tonight, what we're talking about, the things we do, you're not going to hear from the typical insurance agent. You're not going to hear it from your banker. You're not going to hear it from the, the typical CPA. Okay? You're not going to hear it from the typical attorney or whatever. We're, again, totally different than what we do, and we deal with truth. We just lay it out there. Here it is. You do with it what you want to, but here's the truth. How does it fit in your life? Let okay. me say this real quick. Yes, sir. We were fishing the other day with a fishing guy. Yeah. Only, one. only in Texas. The fishing guys two got $2 million dollars in 401ks. Hmm. And the guy we were talking to, I asked him about a guy, any long story short, he said, I have $2 million with BP Petroleum I put in 30 years. I said, well, how's the account doing? He said, oh, it's great. He said, I made 70000 last year. I said, think about what you just said. He said, what do you mean? I said 70000 on $2 million is one interest rate. Three it's not even 3%. Wow. Are you happy with that? Seeing how inflation was almost that much. But I said the thing you need to be worried about is you could lose half of that account the next 24 to 48 months. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of Mary Dent said in 24 months to 48 months the Dow is more than 5000 What that means is people are going to lose two-thirds of all the money they've got saved. And they have no idea what's fixed to him. And he had no idea. None. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, we have, a, we have a program. We can move a portion of that money and double your retirement income. He said, really? And as I said that, we were in a boat going to Galveston. And I looked to the right, there's American National. Big building down there, you see it? You know where it is? He said, how can you do that? I said, I don't. That company does right there. He said, you about Anco? I said, yeah, they're the ones that own all this around us right here. They've got stuff like that. And I said, the 72T that we do, you can transfer a portion of your money now in your 50s that double your income in retirement. He started going to the internet. He called me last night. He says, how do I get involved? I said, to buy or to go to work? He said, well, mm -hmm. now look, if we move 600 grand, right? Yes, sir. That money, yes, sir. it's only a third of it. What's the commission on that? A bunch. It's more than you make a guy in fishing on it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how many of your friends at BP you want to talk to? He said, all of them. Wow. 
Because wow. being a fishing guide ain't easy. Wow. That's a grinding, grueling thing. We were out there all day, drove all over that bay out there, man. I mean, the guy worked hard wow. trying to put us on fish. So the commission is more than he makes all year on one sale. And he's not going to be able to sell himself in our. We'll let you go into that further. But, it, I mean, and, and again, it's all just like what Steve did. If we're willing again to see the people, to share with them what we do, not only do we make a huge difference, but people today are ripe and ready to hear our message. I always like to make the statement that when you leave here this evening, the things that we're seeing and talking about here, the little bit that you're going to take with you from what we're talking about here is 100% more than most people have any idea about that you come in contact with every day. So I like to tell folks, when you leave here tonight, you already know some things most people have no idea about. And if you're willing to share at some point some of the things we're talking about here, it can make all the difference in the world, in their lives and yours as well. So it really comes down to no, no one in here when you leave here tonight, has the excuse of being able to say, I don't know what to say. Okay? Living benefits and tax-free income. Is that that difficult? No. If I could show you how to have living benefits if you need it and retire on tax-free income, is it that hard to remember? Because see, now, if you can do that, you know what to say. Now the question is this. Do we have the courage to say it? See, if you do, things happen just like what you're hearing right here. We've got a message that's a powerful, it's a stick of dynamite if we use it, if we're willing to use it. Let's move on. Okay, retirement roadblocks. Most consumers, consumers do not understand the four simple roadblocks. Number one, to retire procrastination. Always has been, always will be. I'm going to do it, just not today. I'm going to get around to it. Sooner or later, I will do it, but tomorrow. Okay? That's for most people. Risk. Risking their money. And come to find out again when you're talking to people, just ask folks if you're talking to them. Again, how much of what you've set aside, if you've got anything at all, can you afford to risk? Most people will tell you, well, I can't afford to risk anything. Then, what are you doing in the accounts that you're in? Most folks, again, are in variable accounts where they can lose money on a consistent basis and do. Okay? Fees, like we talked about, paying high fees for somebody to manage these accounts. The average, again, cost per fees, 2.9%. Figure that into a half million or a million or $2 million account. Figure out what that is over the course of time that you've got an account set up like that. And of course, lastly and mostly, taxes. And we've already established that everybody in here believes taxes are going up. Do you know your number to retire? We're going to give you some information right here to think about if you hadn't thought about it before. Very simple illustration, but it's real. Okay, where are you in here? I, I look across the room, pretty much everybody in here is between 20 and 30, right? Amen. Right? Except, except for me, okay? And this just shows you here quickly again, it's 20 years of monthly retirement income from 66 to 85 at an 8% assumed rate. And you may say, can y'all do 8%? Yes, we can. The index products that we use have averaged that, how long, Roy, or what period of time is that over here? How many? 30. 30 years. Is that a pretty good track record? As a matter of fact, it's eight and a half over 30 years. Do your homework. Check it out. For you. Don't take my word for it. Do your homework. Check it out for yourself. We can get you all the information you need. Bottom line, if you're 20 years old and you want to retire with uses of 5000 a month, you got to be setting aside at 20, $113 a month. You look at that, some of you youngsters here, and you go, well, that's not that big a deal, but the problem is this. Most people, most got most most folks at 20 years old are thinking retirement. You got to be kidding, man! I got I got a lot of time to think about that. Man, I'm just I just got out of the house. I'm interested in having fun. I'm going to get a car.